Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Finnovate Podcast. My name is Greg Palmer, and we have a fun couple of episodes coming your way. We're going to be talking to our best of show winners from Finnovate Fall 2022, the event that just wrapped up here in September in New York. And first out of the gate, I'm going to be chatting with John Findlay, CEO of Lemonade LXP. John, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me, Greg. I appreciate it. Well, first off, congratulations on the best of show win. Obviously, that's something that has to be pretty gratifying. But for people who haven't seen your demo, can you start by just giving us a little bit of information on what Lemonade is and what it is that you guys do? Yeah, so absolutely. So first of all, thank you again for having me. And and also a big thanks to everybody who voted for us. Uh, We were pretty grateful. So Lemonade is a digital growth platform that helps financial institutions and fintechs maximize the ROI on their technology investments. So there's two sides to our platform. One side is a learning experience platform that is designed to turn frontline staff into digital experts so they can promote and support your technology. And then the other side is a digital enablement or digital adoption platform. It's the fastest tool in the world for creating walkthroughs of your technology so that staff can use them in the flow of work and customers can use them on demand all to help drive that fluency and comfort level with the technology so you maximize the usage and thereby maximize the ROI and the investment. Yeah, no, it's a really cool platform. And I would encourage anybody who hasn't seen it to go and take a look at the video itself, um, see the seven minutes that he actually showed up there on stage. But before we get into the technology, which we will do in a little bit more uh, more time, can you start by talking through you know, the problem that you saw that you guys are trying to solve? Because I think it's such an interesting piece. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd love to take I'd love to say that we we thought of the whole thing ourselves and found the problem ourselves. But the reality is um, it, we kind of stumbled across it. We our company is a spin off of another company that we founded in 99, which is a, a digital promotions company. So we build that site company builds microsites with games and contests. And anyway, we were working with the MBA brand on a college campus promotion, they get acquired by TD. So the VP of marketing from MBA became the head of digital for TD USA. And he called us and said, you know what his challenge was? Not enough of his customers were using his online and mobile banking channels. And so he said, what could we do? And you know, we didn't think running a promotion made sense because it reaches a national audience, most of whom aren't his customers. But the folks who weren't using his technology, where are they? Well, they're coming into your branches and calling your contact center. So we said, just use your front line to promote the technology. And he said, well, our front line doesn't have to bank with us, which we've since learned is the case where about 70% of financial institutions. So if your front line doesn't bank with you, they don't use your technology. uh, And so they're not going to be familiar with it, certainly not going to be fluent. And if they're not fluent, they're not going to have the knowledge and confidence they need to, to support it to customers. And each time a customer has an interaction with anybody in your financial institution, that's an opportunity to convert them. And those opportunities are missed every day by the majority of financial institutions. And so when we did this pilot program for TD, which was a game-based training program for frontline staff to drive fluency, we were able to skyrocket digital product recommendations. And then they said, uh, let's roll the plot pilot out into everyone or to their broader um, cons- broader staff. And so at that point, we had learned that every financial institution had this problem. So we realized what we could be is the the technology that bridges the gap between the banking tech that financial institutions and fintechs are rolling out and the customers who are meant to use it. So we came across the problem because we were fortunate enough to be invited into a strategic conversation by a large financial institution on how to solve this um, digital adoption and digital growth challenge. Um, And from there, we sunk our teeth in and, and figured out Um, that a lot of our best practices from the other business could be applied to this challenge. And from there, we we grew it into, into the platform it's become today. 
Yeah, I mean, it's really an amazing story. And if you watch the technology, you see how, um, I don't want to say simple, because clearly there's a lot going on, but how easy it is to get involved with it to, you know, as a bank employee to start to understand you know, how um, I can progress through the platform and learn more and begin to replicate uh, the, those results a little bit more. Now, this is a really interesting one, because I think a lot of people in the financial technology space have this general idea that, you know, adoption numbers aren't as high as we would like them to be. You know, we build cool technologies, and for whatever reason people aren't out there using them and, and this is a constant source of frustration that I've seen over the course of, of my time at Finnovate. Now from your perspective, do most banks appear to be aware that this is kind of where a problem lies for them or is it something that they just you know haven't really given much thought to? It's a great question, Greg. Um, so we brought the we brought our business to market uh, late 2018, early 2019 in that ballpark. At that time those the conversation was really about driving adoption and it wasn't every financial institution that for whom it was on their radar. Like a lot of FIs didn't really care so much about adoption. COVID then hit and the challenge went from driving adoption um, because of course COVID drove adoption. Uh, so many branches were shut down. People were working from home and people were banking from home. So all of the transactions migrated to, to digital and what banks and, and credit unions quickly realized was their staff wasn't trained properly on their tech, and they didn't have the right systems to support customers or members, depending on the case. Um, they didn't have the system to support the end users. And so it became a priority very quickly as, as um, people started working and banking remotely. Um, and as we've emerged from the pandemic, we've seen that um, because FIs learned that lesson, that um, while they had strove, striven for adoption all along, um, the real challenge that they were going to face was in um, their digital uh, offering a great digital customer experience once people started to use the technology. And so now every financial institution, I think, realizes this because it's become um, a super important part of their strategic roadmap moving forward. As more and more transactions migrate to digital, making sure that that digital customer experience becomes potentially even existential for a lot of these FIs. And so What's interesting to us is the financial institutions implement Lemonade and they tell us, you know, that the, they don't have the right tools in place to train front, to train staff and to support customers. And then they, they also say that their technology providers don't do the greatest job of helping them with that. And it makes sense for the tech providers, the fintechs that provide all the great technology that they offer to customers, their focus is on building great tech not so much on training folks to use it and supporting um, the end users. And so that's the the void we fill. And, and of late, we've started to see an increasing number of fintechs start to implement Lemonade so that they can sort of glean a competitive advantage against other fintechs when they're at, in that boardroom conversation of, okay, we, we want to choose your technology. How are you going to help us train our staff and support our customers? So we're starting to see where where. Most of the demand was always coming from the financial institution. Now we're seeing the fintech start to say, okay, no, actually, we want to be able to offer this to our customers as well. So, um, yeah, they do know the problem. They, to answer your question, since the pandemic, increasingly FIs knew the problem. And now in the last year, we've really started to see fintechs pick up on it as well. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes sense because it's the same basic problem, just kind of moved slightly further upstream. The idea that if your customers don't know how to use your technology, they're not going to use it. And if they're not using it, then they're going to stop paying for it is not a particularly difficult equation to kind of wrap your head around. And so I think it's something which is, um, you know, this is not something the fintech industry has done a great job of historically, is kind of getting outside of the bubble, engaging with people on that sort of human level and saying, here's what's in it for you. Here's how to do this. You know, communicating about what you've built has, has not always been the strength of the people that we see, you know, across the Finnovate stage or in the industry more broadly. And I'm glad to hear that there are people who are focusing on it, like yourselves, and that there's this appetite on the part of the um, FIs and the fintechs that support them to really try and do a little bit more here, because I think there is a lot more that we can do. Um, I'd like to switch gears a little bit now and talk about the technology itself. You know, what's kind of underneath the hood? Again, people should watch the demo to really uh, understand it. But from your perspective, how, how does it all work? Can you give us just a quick overview there? Yeah, sure. So. 
in in our in our initial um, discoveries with financial institutions, what we realized in talking to their staff is the training has a little bit of a bad reputation at FIs, largely because uh, most people have been uh, associate training with the dreadful compliance training they've been subjected to all their careers, and so. Um, We realized that a lot of this game-based digital engagement technology and best practices that we've developed with our other business over 23 years could be leveraged to overcome that aversion to training. So Lemonade features uh, what we call a booster game, which really positions the entire training program as uh, a fun experience. And that's how we drive initial participation. And once we have um, the staff members in the platform, um, they then are directed to uh, training and the way that the their performance in the training modules impacts their progress in the booster game. So um, and and Lemonade has all its own authoring tools baked in. So you can author game based learning. You can create technology walkthroughs so that um, staff can actually experience your technology in a in a virtual environment. You can create virtual customer interactions. You can curate content from the web. You also have the ability to create certification so you can certify your staff on your technology and report on that so you can look and say okay um, my staff is 86 percent certified on uh, this new piece of technology so that you know they're offering they're able to offer that great customer experience for the end user and also a less stressful experience for frontline staff who are meant to support this tech so there's an awful lot baked into the learning experience side and then on the digital adoption side I mentioned earlier, it's the fastest way to create walkthroughs of of any technology. And you can also author a branded, searchable um, WCAG compliant hub to house those walkthroughs. So imagine if you're a staff member and you take some training, and then you don't get a specific question about the technology you learned for, say, six months. Six months after your training, somebody says, oh, I don't know how to select a new recipient for online bill pay. Well, you don't want to have to go search through all that old training. So the Digital Academy piece, which is the digital adoption platform, allows them to search for that specific transaction so they can find that walkthrough to help the customer um, understand that that, um, piece of technology and how to use it um, quickly, like in the flow of work. So there's a lot to the platform. It was... um, it was a significant investment and uh, a fairly in-depth development cycle, but it's now quite full featured um, and it's driving fantastic results for our customers. So we're we're pretty proud of the tech. No, I mean, it's really cool. And one of the things that I think is really unique about it is that you know human beings don't all learn in the same way. Different people have different ways that they like to absorb information. Some people are more hands-on. Some people want to kind of see somebody else do it. There's visual learners. There's people who learn by reading. And you guys do a good job, I think, of accounting for all of those different types of individuals and giving people kind of multiple ways that they can engage with the material and really learn what they need to learn. Um, I know that this is something you know, we've talked about before, uh, this idea that it, it really needs to be human centric, right? You have to kind of look at people, look at the psychology of people, how they grow. And I know you've had, um, uh, you're fortunate enough to have some data that um, really allowed you to kind of tackle this with a very human centric viewpoint. Can you talk about that data piece that you guys were in this really fortunate position to have coming into this whole process? Yeah, we as I mentioned, it's a lemonade a spinoff of a company called Launchfire. It's a game-based digital promotions company. And we were the agency of record for some very large uh, advertisers, Coca-Cola being one. Um, then over the years, like Time, Time Warner, Procter and Gamble, Costco, you name it, very very large brands. So you can imagine that when we ran promotions and they put their massive media budgets behind them, that drove huge amounts of interactions, like hundreds of thousands of users uh, in an individual promotion. And that would yield millions, if not billions of data points. Um, And we would be able to look and see of the specific engagement tactics that we integrated into the promotion solution for an individual promotion, which of them drove Uh, had the most impact on user behavior and how did it impact user behavior? So we're able to look at those things uh, over time. And so we kind of developed this book of best practices. And by the time we got to the point that we started to build the Lemonade platform, we had boiled things down into specific categories. Like here are great tactics for driving initial participation. Here are great tactics for driving continued engagement. Here are great tactics for driving education. So there were all of these um, best practices that we could say, okay, 
where can we leverage this on the platform? How do we fit this this particular tactic in, in an elegant way? Um, and so we were really lucky that we had 23 years of learning about um, digital engagement, um, that we were able to um, use that as the, the foundation for the platform. So that we, we were in a very lucky position there, I would say. No, I mean, it's it's excellent. And it's funny how sometimes the data that you collect ends up being valuable in a way that you had no idea it was going to be valuable for that. And I think this is a really good lesson, more broadly speaking, for you know those of us who are in financial institutions or in fintechs, you're collecting data that may be more valuable than you think. And you know, this is one of those ideas that you should just always keep in the back of your mind. Like, what do I really know? What do I have the data that that you know, what do I know that maybe I don't know that I know? Um, and obviously you've done a very good job of making it something which or turning that data into something which is now incredibly useful in a completely different field. Um, I think we have time for one more question here before we have to wrap up. Um, and I think it's a you know relatively simple one. What's next for Lemonade? I mean, how far can you take this? Because you know, I think it's something where you, it's so easy to see the value. It's easy to see why it resonated so strongly with the Finnovate audience. So what's the next step for you guys? Well, so we when we brought, brought Lemonade to market, our goal was to build a beachhead in the financial services industry. And the reason is our association with TD through that association, we learned a lot about the FI space and the challenges that financial institutions were facing as they transform or, or migrate to, to more digital businesses. So we said, you know what, we think we can build a really good market, a really good business in this market. And so we're about halfway to our, to our, our beachhead that we want to build in the financial services industry. Um, and we figure after that, there may be segues, natural segues to other industries. The fact of the matter is Lemonade is the really the most effective platform in the world for teaching tech. So for training staff on technology and supporting customers as they go to use it. So you can imagine that any company that uses technology or sells technology, um, we're a great fit for. So we've, we've um, started to see some of that migration happen naturally. Um, through TD, we ended up working with TD Insurance, and they're using uh, Lemonade to certify frontline staff on certain things and to, and to support um, customers who are using InsureTech. Um, we've also seen migrated over to uh, some mortgage businesses, and we have one manufacturer. So there's natural um, segues happening to other industries. But we want to remain steadfast uh, in our marketing efforts and our sales efforts and our pursuits. We want to stay in the financial services industry because we're not where we would like to be in terms of our beachhead, but we're, we're making great progress towards it. So I think over the next 12 to 18 months, we should be able to get to our beachhead number. And then we'll see about what other industries seem to be the best fits for us. And there's some very natural spinoffs like contact centers. Um, you know, every financial institutions all have contact centers, but of course, contact centers service tons of other industries. And because of our great technology training and the support and the flow of work, we've seen great use cases at contact centers. We've also seen great use cases at retail. Um, so we have started to see we actually have a couple of restaurants launching lemonade. So there's a lot of natural segues, um, but we're going to try to let the market tell us while we continue building our beachhead in the financial services industry. No, I mean, it makes a ton of sense. And I think anywhere that there are people who are struggling to train staff in a technology setting, um, there's going to be you know, room for this kind of solution. So um, I, I wish you all the luck in the world. I think it's been great to watch as you've come to our shows over a couple of years and sort of we've seen the evolution of, of how things have been going for you. Congratulations again on the best of show win. And again, I would encourage anybody who's interested in learning more, check out their demo video. Um, you can see exactly how this all looks there. Um, and John, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Greg. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to chat with you. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>